Welcome back to Yoshi Entertainment, everybody. So just recently, and I mean very recently, the actor Kristen Keys came out, he came onto social media, and he dropped a bombshell, if you will. Now, some people might not know who Christian Keys is. He's a singer, he's a director, he's an actor. He's acted in a host of different movies. One of the very first, well, stage plays that I saw him act in was one by Tyler Perry by the name of Medea Goes to Prison, Medea Goes to Jail. And like I said, he's acted in a host of other different movies and TV shows since then. So he's been around. But he went on to social media to express how over the past quite a few years, you heard me right, years, he has been, as he said, being harassed in the you know what kind of way by a certain very powerful, very rich, if you will, person at the top. Now, he did not name this person. He wanted to during the live stream, if I'm not mistaken, it was a live stream but his brother advised him not to. And I don't blame him because it's good that he did come forward, but at the same time, he has to consider his safety, his own safety. Watching him make that video and talk about what he had to endure, basically that, like I said, this person had constantly, multiple times, tried to get him to compromise himself, said that there was one instance where he was invited to the apartment, the house, so to speak, of a particular person who he did not name, and they offered him 100k to take off his clothes to compromise himself essentially to sell himself to them and he said no because he has more integrity than that that you can't purchase his integrity and he was saying that he chose to take the scenic route and when he said that what he meant was he knew whenever he went into acting singing directing the industry that in order to get certain places especially very quickly to get to the top to be really really famous you've got to compromise people don't want to wrap their heads around that they don't want to accept it but it's the truth the industry is wicked it's demonic it's filled with people that are very evil and heinous and you're not about to go up in their industry and go anywhere big without compromising yourself so he said he took the scenic route, which basically meant he took the long way around to keep from having to compromise. But even then, you will still have people coming out of the woodwork trying to pay you to compromise, offer you things to compromise. Sometimes it might be because they want to see you crumble. If they see somebody with integrity and character, they'll say, well, you know what? I want to see if they're like the rest of these people whose integrity can be bought, who's not actually about what they're saying they're about or because they're attracted to you. Kristen Keyes is a very attractive man. He's always been. The man ages like fine wine. He doesn't even look like he aged, really, when you think about it. If they find you an attractive young person, whoever you are, they're going to test your morals. They're going to test your character. And he chose, like I said, to do the right thing. It's really sad. And like I said, whenever I saw that, it really broke my heart. My heart broke for him when he was talking about how he had to deal with this and he was dealing with it in silence for years. He said there was always some new garbage that they were trying to push on him. Something else right after the next thing. What makes it so sad is that this guy is not problematic at all. He's never been. He's always been a very positive individual. He does very well with every role that he gets. He's always been very for his people and for black women. He's just, he's just a good guy. And I guess it adds a new layer of just messed up whenever really good people who we've seen over the years do well and do people well get taken advantage of and they have to suffer in silence because of these people, these raggedy people at the top who have all this money and influence and power. And it's even worse for him because there have not been spaces created to make men comfortable coming out, talking about being you know what assaulted you know what harassed there are a lot of other men who make fun of men for being you know what assaulted you know what harassed by both men and women there have not been enough spaces created to make men feel comfortable coming out and talking about this stuff that's why whenever the cassie case came out I feel like, I have to say allegedly, but I do feel like there were male victims. But they did not want to come out because they didn't want people to try and shame them and make fun of them and embarrass them because they were taken advantage of by another man. It's another slap in the face to a whole nother degree when there is a man exerting power over another man because he has more money, he has more influence. 
he's taking that power and he is hurting that man in a way that nobody should be hurt, first of all, but in a way that is especially heinous to hurt another man, taking advantage of them, taking their power away from them, and then making it to where they can't do anything. And if they speak out, they'll ruin them or try to ruin them further. It's really, really sad. Although he was very brave, he came out still. He was very, very brave. And I was scared whenever the Cassie case came out because one thing that I did not want is for people to treat those men who were finally coming out, who had finally gathered the courage they needed to do what they knew they had to do. I did not want them treated like how they treat some of these women out here who come out and blow the whistle on what some of these men have done. I did not want them to be treated the same way. I didn't want them to be embarrassed, to be talked about, for it to be said, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. They're just out here for money. And that's another thing that he spoke about in that video. He said he intentionally waited until the statute of limitations expired so nobody could say he was doing this for a cash grab. And again, that's sad because it's sad he even had to do that just to prove that this was the truth and he had nothing to gain except for telling the truth and liberating himself from the harassment he's been enduring that he should not have had to endure all this time. Because that money is the least that they could get for being screwed over by these people, other than those people facing jail time, prison time, and the consequences of their actions. He also mentioned that at one point in time, he just got so fed up, he started keeping devices like pens that are recorders on him to record these people doing this stuff so he'll have evidence and proof. He even mentioned that he had a recording of the particular person he was talking about. He said, I have this recording. I am going to do something about it. And when y'all hear the recording, y'all are going to know exactly who it is. And quite frankly, that scares me. I'm going to be honest. It scares me a little bit. And if it doesn't scare, it at least disturbs me. And I think it scares and disturbs me because... All of the thoughts of who it could be, who I'm thinking it could be, is coming to my mind. And that, like I said, I think is why it's so disturbing and scary to me. Because it has to be somebody that's very famous that we all know. A lot of people who have been speculating who it might be, I don't really want to throw any names out there. I just have some people in my mind who I hope that it's not. But if it is, they need to be exposed. They need to be called out and they need to be held accountable. Because like I said, nobody should have to go through this. No man or woman should have to go through this at the hands of another man or woman. I just hope and pray that God protects him, God protects his family, and that God helps him through this. Because that is very traumatic. He's already had to go through what he went through and now he's got to, you know, he's got to do the public thing. That's never easy. You've always got those people, well, why didn't you say something before? They always have all this smoke for the victim, but they'll never fix their raggedy mouths to say anything about the person who did the stuff, which is why a lot of people don't want to come forward. It's why a lot of people, they go and settle behind closed doors and just say, okay, fine, just give me some money and I won't say anything. Some people will even come up with the whole NDA thing. Oh, well, didn't you sign an NDA? You can't say anything. He spoke about that as well. He reminded everybody that NDAs don't cover criminal activity. So if they did anything, which I believe him, everything that came out of his mouth, I believe it. No NDA is going to stop whatever consequences they're going to have. Nothing they have to say because at this point, people are opening their eyes. They're seeing these people at the top, these elites, these people at the top, like I said, for what they really are, for who they really are. The abusers, the perpetrators, the you know what starts with a P, ends with a O. People who like to harass and assault people of one, the other gender, or both. Like I said, it's just sad that he had to go through that to that degree for so many years that he had to suffer in silence because, like I said, these people, they have money, they have power, they have influence, and you've got to be careful about the timing, how you approach this and how you do it keeping his safety in mind. He's got to worry about the safety of his family. Like I mentioned also before, he covered all bases in that video. The proof, him willing to take a lie detector test however many times, him talking about how he let the, like I said, the statute of limitations go, the NDA, that's in the trash because it doesn't cover criminal activities, like I said. He covered everything. He really dotted all his I's and crossed all of his T's. Once again, I'm going to take this time to acknowledge, to let it be known once again that we need to create more spaces 
for men to come forward about their pain, their trauma, and what they've been through. We need to create more spaces for men to be vulnerable, to come forward and speak on being harassed and being assaulted, whether it was by another man or a woman. People have been bringing up that this is not the first time that a black man has came forward and talked about this kind of stuff. Terry Crews was another black man, another black celebrity actor who also came forward just not that long ago. He was very vulnerable and he opened up and talked about how that executive, once again, somebody powerful in a high place with a lot of money and influence who could make or break you, took advantage of him. Wasn't even in a private setting. He was so bold, so disrespectfully bold and lustful and carnal that he tried to take advantage of him. Like I said, not even in a private setting, if I'm not mistaken. He was in a rather public place when this happened. And basically, you could see that he really wanted to cry and break down in that moment because, once again, it's a different story when it's a man taking advantage of another man, using his power, and he knows that because he's in a high place, especially when there's race involved, that's another layer on top of it. That man was white. He knew that it would have been Black Terry Crews' word against his white executive word. He knew that that wasn't going to go over well. Of course, a lot of people still got behind him and believed him, but there was a lot of people who were throwing shade at Terry Crews, saying, well, why are you speaking about it now? You've got all these muscles. You're always in these shows and movies flexing your muscles. Why didn't you do something then? As if he could have. His career would be non-existent to this day from that point had he did something. And there's no telling what else they could have done to him, to his family, to his career, to his livelihood. Had he retaliated in a way that some people try to say he should have retaliated. Now, I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. I'm not trying to downplay women and these situations when they happen to women. This video is about the men right now. But anyways, like I was saying, once again, people are tired of it. They're tired of these people in high places taking advantage of people using their power, their money, their influence to hurt people, to traumatize people. I'm glad that he came forward. It takes a lot of courage to do that. Some people are just not in the emotional and mental space to be able to. But once again, he was very courageous for doing that. And it seems like there's a lot of people that is backing him up, which is really good because that's how it starts. One person comes forward and then the floodgates open. I honestly believe that this started, this kind of chain reaction. I, I kept saying the ball is rolling. Cassie, I believe, is the one who started it. And I'm glad that she did. And now everybody else seems to be able to come forward. Like they feel empowered, so to speak. That's the power of one person standing up, being brave and coming forward. Like I said, I'm acknowledging that it's not easy. Some people just can't handle it. But thank God for the people who came forward once again and who got the ball rolling. And even Christian Keys, in his own way, I believe will get the ball rolling for other men. I believe him coming forward will empower and encourage other men to come forward. That's why these moments, these spaces are very important. Yoshi Entertainment is a platform and a space where we will talk about these issues. We will not shame people for coming forward. We will not shame men who have been hurt who need a space to talk about being hurt and coming forward. Yoshi Entertainment is a safe space for those things. Once again, I applaud and salute Christian Keys for his bravery and coming forward. And that goes for everybody who decided to take that step. Their bravery should be celebrated for real. And I also salute him for once again, his integrity and his character. Like nobody ever promised, God never promised anybody that had an integrity would be easy or comfortable. You don't get brownie points for doing the right thing, for turning down bad deals, for not allowing your integrity, like I said, to be bought out. Of course, every now and then people will notice and they'll acknowledge, although your reward comes much later by God. And that's what I believe in my heart. Also him not selling out, him putting his foot down and saying, I am going to take, like he said, the scenic route, the long way around, because that's what it's going to take. And I refuse to sell out. I refuse to sell my soul and I refuse to sell my butt. That's what he basically said. He said the other word. I'm not going to use the other word, but that's what he said. That needs to be applauded. That needs to be acknowledged. Some attention needs to be brought to that, especially considering the fact that we live in a world, a society, a community, a culture that does the opposite, that promotes the opposite. Selling your soul, selling your morals, selling your integrity for some money. 
Anybody could easily throw their respect, their morals in the trash for things like money, materialistic things, and fame, clout. But you see who really has a backbone? Who's really good and well-natured and well-mannered? Who's for real about doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do? Who truly has integrity and character when you see them going through these situations? And once again, like I said, they stand 10 toes down in doing what they know is right and not compromising themselves. If you don't stand for something, as the saying goes, and that something should be the right thing, you'll definitely fall for anything. But anyways, like I said, my heart absolutely broke for him and my heart breaks for all victims of these kinds of crimes. For anybody who has experienced something like that, my heart breaks for you and I pray that God helps heal you from the inside out. You all let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments below respectfully. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You all have a very blessed, safe and beautiful day.